Hi, Nathan Kylie here, and this is part two of my video chat on conditioning and maximal aerobic speed, how we can use MAS now to prescribe training. We've, if you haven't already, go back and watch part one where I just uh, explain what maximal aerobic speed is. Now I wanna tell you how you can use it. Maximal aerobic speed is a really good tool for not only testing, but also the prescription of training. What I think a lot of people misunderstand is that MAS can be used for a variety of different training methods that can end up being used to train different types of physical qualities uh, from a conditioning perspective. I wanna go through some examples of training methods and this is not necessarily an exhaustive list and uh, some of the prescriptions here are kind of just the ways that I use these methods. Some other coaches might have slightly different numbers that they'll use, so uh, don't take what I'm saying here for gospel. This is just how I do it, okay? Some training methods that I'll use. The, the first method, and this is probably the one that most athletes are common uh, or experienced with, is uh, the Eurofit method. They've probably never heard of it being called the Eurofit method before. And in fact, to most athletes, the Eurofit method is MAS running. That's probably what they're familiar with the most. Now, the Eurofit method uses a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio. So that means for every second that you're doing running, you're then going to do the same amount of seconds in recovery between repetitions or bouts. The Eurofit method is usually ran at between 110 and 120% of your MAS. Now, some, uh, like I said, some coaches might do higher or lower uh, depending on the set duration or the phase of the year and what their athletes need. Now, sets for the Eurofit method are generally gonna be uh, five to six minutes in length Although, like I said, they could be shorter or longer. So what this might look like in practice is a set of 10 repetitions, 15 seconds on, 15 seconds off. And for any given athlete, it might be a straight line run of 75 or 80 meters that they need to complete in that 15 seconds of work. Uh, and like I said, 10 reps, so that ends up being a five minute set that they're doing there. The next one uh, that I'm going to speak to about to you guys about is the billet grid. Uh, and some, uh, some athletes might be familiar with billet grids. These are the ones that are run around in a big rectangle where you've got uh, a work interval and also an active recovery interval. Um, so one-to-one -one for the work and active recovery sections. The work is generally going to be around 100% of the MAS and 70% MAS is the recovery interval. Uh, and that might be a four to six minute set. So they're gonna be running at their, at their MAS speed along a long end of the rectangle, and then about 70% of that speed on a short end. So they'll end up going around in a rectangle with longer works, shorter rests, and that will typically be like a 15 second on, 15 second off setup as well. The next one I'll talk to you about is Tabata, and Tabata is uh, a really hard, high intensity training session. Um, where we're using two to one work to rest ratios. So we're doing double the amount of work as we are rest and the intensities are gonna be higher. Naturally, because those intensities are higher and the work intervals are longer, our sets are probably gonna be shorter than some of those other methods that we spoke to before. Uh, a typical prescription of this uh, is gonna be like a 20 second on, 10 second off. An athlete might be running 90 meters in that, in that work duration. Uh, which lines up with their MAS intensity, and that might be an eight rep set. The next one, and this is a favorite of mine, is extensive tempo. Now, not all coaches will prescribe extensive tempo using maximal aerobic speed. Uh, a lot of coaches will simply use 70% of the athlete's maximum sprint speed, or some other coaches have proposed that we use the uh, about 50% or halfway between MAS and maximal sprint speed to prescribe this, but I still find using MAS a really simple and easy way to give an athlete a target distance to hit when they're doing extensive tempo intervals. Now, extensive tempo is shorter durations of work and longer recoveries in between reps. So one to three, sometimes one to four, and I'll typically prescribe these between 130 and 140% of MAS. And the sets of these are gonna be a bit longer. So because we've got these nice long recovery periods, we can do sets of extensive tempo all the way up to 12 minutes in duration. Uh, and perhaps some coaches do even longer. 
The great thing about extensive tempo is because of those longer recovery periods, you typically find that the quality of the running gets, that gets done during extensive tempo is quite high and it's a good tool for accumulating some good high speed running meters as well if that's something you're interested in. The last method I want to talk to you about and a common one that I'll use are long intervals and these will be between 4 to 1 in work to rest ratio and 3 to 1. So 4 minutes of work one minute of recovery or three minutes of work, one minute of recovery. These are gonna be lower intensity um, than what some of these other methods. So below MAS, so 80 to 90% of MAS, but these sets can be quite long. We might do a 20 minute set or it, perhaps even longer of long intervals. So now that you've got an understanding that not only is MAS Eurofit, it's also all these other methods. And in fact, you can apply MAS to all sorts of other methods as well to prescribe training intensities. Let's talk about what that looks like practically in terms of taking an MAS score and using that to then prescribe an exact distance that we're going to be trying to target during a work interval. The simple formula that we use for prescribing a a distance to complete in a work interval is maximal aerobic speed multiplied by the intensity that we're looking to work off. So that could be any one of these numbers here. And then we're going to uh, multiply those two together by work duration. All right. So uh, that's not necessarily going to be these numbers here. It's going to be the number of seconds that we're working for. So an applied example, let's say we're doing extensive tempo work for 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off, and in this example we'll say 130% of MAS. So we're going to use our example from before in the last video, like I said if you haven't watched that go back and check that one out. We've got an athlete with an MAS of 5 meters per second, the intensity factor of 130% is 1.3. And if we're multiplying that by 15 seconds of work, we're going to get a target distance to complete in that 15 seconds of 97 and a half metres. So in a, in a practical uh, setting, we're going to go and measure out our 97 and a half metres. We know we're working 15 seconds on, 45 seconds off, and however many reps we've decided that we're prescribing based on where we're at in our training cycle, we might do an eight minute set there. Our athlete's going to be working for 15 seconds to try and hit that target distance, recovering, and then coming back again. Now, um, it's not just linear running, and if you want to use a shuttle distance, you need to take into account the metabolic cost of a change of direction. So simply just uh, cutting your distance in half is probably not uh, going to be the best way to go about that, as you'll find that it's quite difficult to make those distances. As a general rule, I like to take off 0.7 or a full second based on the mass of the athlete from the work duration when I'm trying to work these out if it's going to be a shuttle distance. So. If I'm working with a, a thin, lean athlete who can turn well, I'll take off 0.7 seconds from the work duration when I'm multiplying out my equation to get my target distance. Uh, and then if you're doing a shuttle, you're just gonna halve that. Um, or if I'm working with a bigger athlete, so uh, for example, when I'm working in contact sports like rugby, we've got some, some big forwards that don't turn quite as well, I might take off a full second from the work duration. So in this example, if we were doing a shuttle, we might go five seconds, times 1.3 times 14, uh, and then we're gonna divide uh, whatever our, um, work, our, our, our target distance is in half to create a shuttle. So our athlete's gonna run out and back in that work duration. Hopefully that gives you guys a, a greater conceptual understanding of how we really use MAS to prescribe training. And the thing I wanna try and break down is this misunderstanding that Eurofit one-to-one -one work to rest ratios is MAS running, okay? MAS is a physiological marker of aerobic fitness. It is not a training methodology. And all of these are the methods. And we use MAS to prescribe those methods. They aren't the method itself. Uh, I hope you found that insightful and um, give, it's given you some practical skills to go and prescribe training for yourself. Uh, and what I'll do is in future videos, I'll talk about how and why you would use these different methods at different times in the season to get the most out of your uh, aerobic and glycolytic energy system development. Thanks for watching.